Hey guys, I just sort of wanted to make a video here uh, showing all the work that I put into this Delta uh, Rostock Max that uh, completely modified it. It's basically my own machine now, one off, one of a kind. Uh, it's a it's a large machine, a lot larger than the uh, stock one. I have 48 inch extrusions. Uh, I can print up to like 750Z or or whatever. Uh, it's, it's it's pretty tall. Uh, right now, I've been working to put the diamond hot end in here. Uh, designed everything that goes along with this. I got these uh, three extruders mounted uh, and running. Uh, guiding through. I'm doing full color prints now with this guy. Uh, they're uh, using uh, just like a normal printer would use uh, magenta, cyan, and yellow, uh, and I'm, I'm color mixing them to get uh, multiple up to 16 different unique color or even more unique colors, uh, and then just solid colors, uh, so on. These are a little messy because. Uh, I was still figuring out uh, my retraction settings. These are the first things. I designed all these guys. Uh, I'm going to put them up on Thingiverse, but these were all designed by me. They're, they're STLs that are broken up in three for triple color, and then this one's up in the 12 STLs. It's all symmetrical. You just put it in AMS and rotate them all. Uh, and then the star bracelet. I have gotten NinjaFlex to work really well. Uh, so, a rundown. Uh, first things first, uh, I had to figure out how to get the third extruder up in there. Uh, I could have went the easy route, which was to get like a Roomba, like everybody else does, uh, that already has uh, everything native on the board that you would need, but I have a pretty expensive Rambo board in here, uh, and I really didn't want to swap it out if I could add more to it. So, as you look in here, you'll see, uh, this is the stock Rambo. Uh, what I did was I got a uh, a breakout stepper motor driver. Uh, I think this is a 8825. I'm not sure. Uh, one, one of the pull loose steppers that I threw in there. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one. Uh, and then I found auxiliary breakouts and pins that I could use. Uh, the only difference is the Rambo board natively uses digital potentiometers. I am using a manual PET. Uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. I, I just break it out. I rewrote the firmware to work with this, and it's getting its own 12 volts here. Uh, so there's no worries with uh, busting the 5 amp fuse in here or anything, because none of that amperage is, is on the board. It's, it's broken out. Uh, so I'll get more into that. But basically, what I managed to do is I managed to keep the stock Rambo board uh, and the stock LCD, and I, I didn't have to swap anything out. Uh, I haven't seen anything online about adding stepping motors to the Rambo, so I really had to figure it out myself. Uh, but it really didn't take too long, and it wasn't too difficult. I just had to look at the schematic and find out which pins to that Mega in there would, would be usable and tracing them back. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I'll probably make an instructables on how to do that because nobody else managed to do it. Uh, at least from what I could find. Uh, in terms of everything here, everything that you see here is is of my own design. Uh, there's not too many solutions out there. This is, uh, for me at least, or just relatively, this is color mixing and whatnot. Is for an FDM printer, is pretty cutting edge. It's the most cutting edge I've been uh, ever with 3D printing. Uh, it's pretty fun so far. So there wasn't much to go off of, and there wasn't much that I could have used. So I really had to design everything myself. I designed these extruders, and I designed this effector and this diamond mount I designed. Uh, the cool thing about it, uh, I have these guys, these three guys hanging by bungees on these, which is basically, this is basically a ripoff of the Trick Lasers uh, design. Uh, I had this printed, though. Uh, and the effector and the mount, or pretty much my own, the effector kind of looked like Trick Laser, but it, it, it's substantially different in, in terms of use and effectiveness. Uh, everything back here, my whole goal at the beginning of this project, this Delta project, was I wanted to be able to swap out hot ends quickly and efficiently. Uh, no matter what hot end it was, I wrote the firmware to take in multiple hot ends. I, I wrote it a certain way that, that it, it's not going to have the same parameters for everything, kind of, kind of object oriented, if you will. Uh, 
so I could put a Camaro in there, two <coughs> two individual uh, heaters with like the Camaro or the Cyclops. I don't know why I put a Cyclops with a diamond, but a Kraken or, or anything else will, will come in. The way I did this is everything is on connectors back here that reach down, all cleaned up. They come up through, uh, and these guys feed. Uh, but I have an XT60 here for the heater cartridge, which will, which will take good amps and heat up quickly. Uh, and then just normal JSTs here for uh, all the other connectors. Uh, and magnets. Ta-da. So, there's just magnets here. Uh, and then magnets there, negative polarity or opposite polarity of, of what's on the mount. Uh, so, eventually, like, say if I want to put a crack in or if I want to put a Cyclops or a Chimera in, all I need to do is design a mount with these spacing that goes with my end effector, uh, and it will just pop in with magnets. Nice and strong, they stay very sturdy. Uh, I really haven't seen any other uh, printers or anything that have swappable hot ends using utilizing magnets, so I do believe I may be the, the first one to use this approach for uh, swapping hot ends or just having your hot end in. And another cool feature about it is uh, sometimes your G code can get funky or something can go haywire on your printer and uh, or an end stop or whatever doesn't work and it will drive itself right into the board or right into the glass and it'll ruin your hot end. Uh, it'll ruin the whole end on your hot end or, or whatever. It'll just cause problems. Uh, the cool thing with this magnet though is that if that happens, if this just wants to go down, the magnet's going to release and then you don't ruin your hot end. And Or if it's on a print, it gets hung up on something and uh, it's too much pressure, the magnet will release and the cool thing about it is that once that force is taken away or it moves past it it will go right back to where it belongs it will not ruin your print uh so that's awesome and, and due to it being magnets and magnets are strong and it doesn't move around there's no there's no shift or movement so it is fairly accurate i have carbon fiber arms on here uh the end effector uh and the mount that i designed they're in polycarbonate. I didn't want to use ABS. ABS doesn't have a really high uh, gas transition temperature. Uh, so the ambient heat from this hot end, which is large, uh, was, was melting ABS uh, past this transition temperature and deforming it, uh, which is a problem on an end effector that needs to be very accurate. Uh, so I moved up to polycarbonate. I uh, managed to get that printed over here in my pool and close set up as you can see I can get up to 114 degrees and this is two stock printers that again I, I modified to meet my needs or whatever I wanted a, a flash forge and a stupid maker bot uh, but they're they're also modified so they go up to high temps and do polycarbonate which is around 280 that you're going to need to print with but the transition temperature of polycarbonate is around 120 130C and ABS is only 80 so you definitely get uh, a lot more. You can you definitely take a lot more heat before it starts deforming. Uh, I'll take this guy off right now. Uh, as for my extruders, my extruders are awesome. Uh, I showed you the Ninja Flex print and these other prints that they're doing. They're they're holding up great. Uh, at first, I had the Easy Extruder uh, or e Easy Extruder from C CMC and C, but it was too bulky and they're I'm not I'm not too keen on, on, on their design of that. So uh I did my own extruder design that you can see here here. Uh puts the pneumatic connector right into the assembly itself, uh screws right in. Everything lines up perfect. You're not gonna get snagged as you as you drive it through uh with the knob. Uh tensioning's good. Uh, and then there's really, I have a little lip down here, and this one isn't hobbed, this gear isn't hobbed in, so there's no place for that filament to go underneath, so it's only going to go through here, so Ninja Flex works perfect. Uh, and it's lightweight, low profile, uh, and not much going on, easy to print. Also, I did this in polycarbonate. I have two fans up here cooling down these extruder motors, because I'm, I'm actually running the current on the potentiometers pretty high, uh, so they do get hot, so, uh, I have those fans cooling them down, but that, that's no big deal. Uh... Let's see, I showed you the board and that. Uh, let's move over here, get a closer look at these guys. Uh, 
as you can see, uh, these pop right in. I, I got, I did away with the uh, the zip ties on the diamond mount. I didn't like the zip ties. I also did away with the, stu the stupid fabric that frays out. I'm um, using silicon uh, rubber that I cut up uh, as a heat insulator. Uh, and then that works just just fine. Uh, actually, a lot better than that fabric. Uh, and then for comparison, you can see mine compared to the easy shooter accomplishes the same thing. Works well with Ninja Flex and, and all the other uh, guys. Uh, the hardware in this guy is basically MK9 hardware, uh, and then these are designed uh, specifically to what I'm trying to do here. Uh, let me turn this on. Let's see. Uh, here's the firmware. Uh, I found a few pins for my. Uh, other extruder here, uh, I put them in. Uh, yeah, here's my extruder pins. Uh, those are the ones that I found specifically on Rambo. Uh, and then also the stock firmware for uh, the CME CNC. Uh, that that that's 0 0.91 uh, Repetier. 0 0.92 Repetier has mixing mixing extruder features, so I, I ended up taking the stock firmware, upgrading it to 0 0.92, uh, and keeping it on the Rambo, and, and like I showed you the LCD and everything. Uh, I added the extra extruder profile, you can see that here, uh, and then configured all these guys. Uh, I'm working on putting a, a PT100 uh, thermistor in here uh, now, so I can get up to higher temperatures. Uh, above 300C, uh, and then the digital PET uh, current and whatnot. That's all here. And then, like I said, the other one's broken out into a, an external stepper driver with a manual PET. Uh, nothing else that really else I like, changed. Uh, when I was originally working, I ended up having to do some uh, rewriting in here in commands.cpp. But uh, when I when I went to 092, what I needed there that I had to write was already written for me. So. I was back, so it was basically just config.h and, and pins.h, so your basic uh, uh, firmware configuration uh, classes. Uh, headers. Uh, this is the uh, assembly for the extruder. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to put this guy up on Thingiverse, but there's really no place for that filament to go. Uh, so NinjaFlex runs good. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a really good uh, design, in my opinion, but it's mine, so... It is my opinion. Uh, and then the the pneumatic connector goes right in there. Uh, enough of that. The here's the effector. Uh, like I said, I have this in polycarbonate now, but my ultimate goal is to machine the guy uh, over here on my little router slash mill uh, that I'm still building and configuring. Uh, putting a big water-cooled spindle in there. Uh, I'm going to try to machine that out of aluminum just for more strength and stability, but the, the polycarbonate has been doing just fine. Uh, and then here's the diamond uh, mount that I designed, a uh, place for the magnets. Uh, and I, I just configured it uh, and, and redesigned it and prototyped it until I got the perfect, perfect, perfect fit in here without zip ties. This this guy does not move. Uh and there's no need for zip ties. Uh and it's 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 really nice. Uh and then I'm gonna try like I said, I'm gonna try to design more of these mounts for more hot ends like the I'm I'm gonna get a Camara, uh I'm gonna get a Kraken, uh and I'm gonna design mounts. So it'll just be a universal effector and mount system with magnets. Uh that I'll probably just machine and sell, or I, I don't know, uh, put on Thingiverse so people can use on their deltas. It, do, it doesn't need to be a row stock; it could be any any delta, as long as you use the uh, the arms that I have on top of the carbon fiber arms that that come out. Uh, I have those designed too. Uh, as long as you use the same spacing on the uh, arms, it's it's it'll work on any delta. Uh, and then, like I said, I'm gonna enclose this guy. Uh, that whole machine. Basically what I'm going to do is the biggest problem that I had uh, by making these, these 48 inch extrusions here uh, I really sacrificed vertical stability 
a lot, especially with this NDF, which really isn't very uh, rigid or strong. Uh, any any movement, you can literally see that it's it's moving, it's moving, and it knocks the configuration and then my calibration to the bed all off. Uh, so I need a lot more strength around the structure. I also want to enclose it. It is a loud printer, and that's a big heated bed plate that's very hard to get up to 100 degrees. Uh, so if it's enclosed, uh, everything will be better, more energy efficient. Uh, It'll be hotter in there for prints, uh, temperatures, whatnot, uh, and then the strength of the enclosure. Uh, so basically, what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm just going to take more MDF. I'm going to machine this MDF out on a router, and they're going to bolt. See, these are stock boards right here. This is a stock board. These, this is all this inside here is basically the the row stock with my boards and extrusions on top of them. Uh, so just just machine these out, and then put in these 60 degree, uh, 30 30 uh, aluminum extrusions around, and then some acrylic paneling around here, uh, and then push that out. Uh, put some some dampening in here, and get rid of the uh, the sound uh, holding the heat and and whatnot. Just making an overall better machine. Uh, then that that's my next project. Now that I got all this diamond stuff figured out. Uh, anything else? I guess that's about it. Uh, there'll be more to come, and like I said, I'll probably make instructables for all this stuff. Uh, how you can do it, if you want to do it. Uh, and then I'll, I'll keep updates of the progress of this machine when I get the enclosure done and everything's finalized. Uh, and thank you for watching.